yesterday, Legault obviously announced that people 45 and over could get vaccinated with AstraZeneca. Uh, what do you think about that, about that uh, lowering for the age group? I think it makes sense because the initial 55 age cutoff was to a certain degree arbitrary. We had to pick a number because you have to pick a number. Overall, it seems that most of these cases of these immune mediated blood clots tend to happen in younger people, tend to happen more in women than in men. But even so, the risk is very, very low. And so when you look at the risk of getting COVID and the risk of having a blood clot with one of these uh, vaccines, the risk of getting COVID is just much, much worse. And so overall, if our goal is to get out of this pandemic and vaccinate the entire population, the, the, the better option is to get vaccinated and to understand that while these risks you know, might, might exist, they are very, very small. The way to think about it also is that every medication, every intervention that you do in hospital carries some risks to it. Every time you go in for surgery, there is a small risk associated with that surgical procedure, but people still go for surgery because they understand that there is a benefit to be drawn from that. So we have to look at vaccines in the same way. They are not risk-free because nothing in life is risk-free, but they provide a lot of benefit. And if our goal is to get out of this pandemic, we are going to need them going forward. So what would you say to a person who uh, who is right now over 45 and thinking about getting the vaccine but might not want to just because it's it's only AstraZeneca? What would you tell them to maybe change their minds or reduce the fear that they have in regards to that specific vaccine? I think the I think what I would say to them is let, let, let me choose my words. Um, <clears throat> If the choice is between getting vaccinated and going unvaccinated, going unvaccinated is going to be much worse because with the high amount of community spread of COVID that we have, the risk of you getting COVID and then suffering a blood clot because of COVID is actually higher. We human beings are very bad at judging risk. We get into our cars every morning and drive to work and never think about the risk that we might get into a fatal car crash, even though it's very, very real. We are prepared to tolerate risks that we think that we can control. And we are very, very bad at tolerating risks that we feel we can't. And people feel like they can't control the risk associated with the blood clots after the vaccine, which is true. You can't control it. It's probably some genetic factor that's causing some people to develop these antibodies. And we feel that we can control the risks associated with COVID, but the truth is we can't. Many people get COVID even though they're trying to be careful because even if you do all the things that public health recommends, there are lapses. People make mistakes. People forget to be careful in certain situations. And with the rise of the new variants, uh, a lot of uh, these cases are occurring because these variants are more infectious. So I would say to people overall, I would say to people overall, the risk of COVID is far, far worse than the risk of any vaccine. Um, and so we're talking about blood clots, obviously, that's the thing that comes up the most. And I guess my question is, what happens if someone does have blood clots and is it is it fatal? Is it dangerous for them? Can they get that fixed? Uh, what's the solution after? Because maybe I think people are scared of the word, but they yeah. don't really know the the, what, what, what follows after. So they're right. safe from COVID, but they get blood clots. What yeah. happens after? So the thing to remember is that these blood clots are different than what most people think of. Most people have been asking me routinely, like if I have a history of heart disease or stroke, can I still get this vaccine? And these are a completely different blood clot. So when we're talking about heart disease and strokes, we're talking about narrowing of the arteries due to high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes. That's one thing. The other types of blood clots that we talk about are things that we see after surgery or in cancer patients. Those are blood clots of the veins, which is a completely different mechanism. What we're talking about here is different from both of those things. So what's actually happening is that there's something in the vaccine that is triggering your body to make antibodies against a very specific thing called platelet factor four. The platelets are these little things in your blood that allow you to make blood clots. They prevent you from bleeding if you were to suffer an accident or, or, or uh, cut yourself in some way. 
what's happening here though is that these antibodies are attacking these platelets the platelets are clumping together so your platelet count is low and you're getting these clumps of platelets clogging certain specific veins in atypical locations and that's where you get the cerebral sinus venous thrombosis uh, clots of the vein leading from the from the brain or splanchnic vein stuff in your abdomen so they're very atypical blood clots that would not be treated in the usual way in most situations when you have a blood clot we give people blood thinners we wouldn't do that here there's actually two proposed treatments one is a different type of blood thinner to get rid of the blood clot but that wouldn't make the problem worse and the other thing is that there is some suggestion that you can give ivig or intravenous immunoglobulin something to block the other antibodies that you're making so there are treatments if you can identify it early. And in fact, if you come in with symptoms, it's not that difficult to diagnose these provided you think about it. And of course, most people think about it because it's been in the news. In terms of the fatality rate, it's very hard to judge. Initially, people were talking about a 40% mortality rate, but it's because people had said, well, there were 10 cases and four of those people died. And that is true. That is a 40% mortality rate but those numbers may not be representative of the general population. As we collect more data, we're going to see that the numbers you know, probably stabilize and probably are a lot lower than we think they are. There were initial reports saying that this could occur in one in a thousand people, which was a vast overestimate. It's, it's much, much less, I assume. Um, so we'll have a better sense soon. It, it is obviously dangerous to have a blood clot, but it is treatable. And if you do get symptoms suggestive of that within the you know, usual framework, which is somewhere between four days and three weeks after the vaccination, uh, yes, it's worth getting, you know, going to your doctor or going to the emergency room if it's very bad to get tested to make sure that you're okay. But again, it's worth repeating that the vast majority of people are not going to get this, and the people who don't get this can be treated and should be okay. And uh, finally, just, uh, you know, why is it important for every single Montreal or Quebec or Canadian to get vaccinated at this point? The point is this, if we want the epidemic to end at some point, we are going to have to get vaccinated. There is no other practical way to have long lasting herd immunity for the entire population, because as long as some people are vulnerable and at risk, this virus will continue to spread. So if we ever want this pandemic to end, we are going to have to vaccinate not just everybody in Canada, but pretty much everybody in the world. And that is going to be hard, but we've done it before. We have eradicated diseases. That's why we don't have smallpox anymore. That's why we don't have polio in this country anymore. So it's going to be hard, but it is doable, but it's going to require everybody to get vaccinated. And if we can do that, and if we can do it well, and if we can do it promptly and efficiently, we will get out of this pandemic and we are all going to be okay in the long term. I lied. I actually have one more question. Go for it. Um, it just prompted. Uh, so I, I'm guess, I guess I can, I don't know if you can respond yeah. in terms of the entire medical community, but I guess uh, how did you feel when Legault announced that people 45 and over could get vaccinated? Because I heard that a lot of, of people in, in, uh, in healthcare were demanding that the age would be lowered just to, to, to reach the, the general uh, immunity faster. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little surprised they picked 45, whereas most other provinces picked 40. Was there a reason for it? I don't think so. I think people had to pick a threshold. Like, why was 40 chosen? It, to a certain extent, these decisions are arbitrary, and it's part of the problem that every province is sort of deciding these things individually rather than having national guidance. Does it make a huge difference? I don't think so, because we're all going to get to that point in the end. And if in a week from now he announces that they're lowering it to 40, it, it's all going to amount to the same thing anyway. So I, that didn't really bother me that much.